And uh, not only is it my godfather's car, but uh, it's the last front engine winning car in 1964. So this is um, this is iconic in, in so many different ways. And I can actually see over the steering wheel. So um, I imagine AJ was a little higher. I don't see any power steering lines. So I think that it probably you had to wrestle this thing around and did a lot of sliding, a lot of dirt sliding through the, the corners of Indianapolis, which today is a big no-no. But, um, but at least you could always see your right rear tire and always check it out. It, it's hard to imagine. I think that we talk, you know, when we talk about it, we, we keep thinking about how, how the evolution of the car is going to go and what's going to be the next trick or what's going to be allowed in. And, um, you know, to think of when they drove these, I mean, they, they had a hard time conceiving when they brought the rear engine car that that was going to be better. The funny thing about it is after the Indianapolis 500, AJ actually took a dirt car and sat on the pole at Milwaukee. And, uh, and I thought that was, that was big time because you see this big old dirt car next to these two little roadsters. And, uh, you know, so the, that, was, that was sort of the beginning of the end for the roadster. I'm pretty happy with my Window World Delara, I can tell you that. Um, it's got a little bit more downforce than this, and, um, but I have, I have a feeling this, this car would be a whole lot more fun to drive around the Speedway. Well, I'm, I'm going to say that my favorite is always going to be the 69 winning car uh, for a lot of different reasons. My uncle and, and the, the way the car looks, um, you know, and, and I don't know, it just, it just has a special feel about it. It's probably because it's mostly fa because of the family, but um, but there are so many other memorable ones. I mean, the yellow submarine, and you know, with Johnny Rutherford, and and you know that brought on an, a whole new era as well. And so you, you just see that the cars, and I got to see a lot of these cars win these races. I mean, when my godfather AJ won the '77 race, I was standing in Tower Terrace, you know, on the seats to see over the people in front of us. So <laughs> I was there. I remember when, um, I can't remember who broke, but AJ took the lead then. And um, of course the crowd stood and cheered and, and uh, always a fan favorite. And I remember him taking the lead with this. And I remember that was the, the first four-time winner. And, and um, you know, so it was, a big, it was a big day, obviously, everybody around. I was very young, uh, but still I could appreciate that point. But, um, I mean, even this, it's, it's amazing, you know, that, um, you know, you think about it. I mean, all this is so thin and it's just sheet metal. And now we're, we're covered in a capsule and, um, and the safety and all that, that's so much better. It's, it's, it's incredible. But, but to think that, I mean, they built this down in Texas and brought it here and, you know, it was sort of, um, you know, these are the ideas that I have and that's what you go with. Now it's all done by computers and wind tunnels and, and other things. And, you know, you miss these days because everybody had a little bit different idea of how to do it and how to, how to go fast and how to win. Yeah, it, I think 1977 was, uh, was another transition, another time that so many special things happened. It was, of course, the first time that a female had qualified for the Indianapolis 500 with Janet Guthrie. Of course, we got to hear ladies and gentlemen start the start your engines which um which was unique because everybody was anticipating well how are they going to do that it was the first time that 200 mile an hour barrier was broke by tom sneva of course the gas man and um you know i was a teammate with tom and i know that he can he can get on it so it, it was a lot of great things happened in 77 and i think um you know when people talk about indycar in the heyday i mean they think of those things that come back that that made it very special i mean now today even last year i think we had five women in the 500 and you know and, and now it's not you know it's it's a new story but it's you know and this is but this is where it all started 1977 that long ago oh definitely i mean this this was this was the thing that everybody then started to build their cars towards because Obviously, I mean, it, it should have won more than once, and uh, had it not broke, it would have. So, it's it's an amazing piece. Even today, it looks very, um, very current, you know, because of all all of being closed in. Yeah, I, I think the thing that you look at when you look at this is um, one good thing about the evolution of the Indy car has been they've taken the driver and taken him from being so far forward to to keep scooting him back and. And that's all only for safety reasons. It's not for performance or any other reason. 
But um, you can imagine Johnny's legs and feet were up here and, and now we're very much back here. So although you don't see that difference as much in the cars, it's, it's there and it's important. I'm walking down through and I'm looking at all these different cars and I'm looking at all the pieces they've hung off them. And, and at that point they were just, they were, the motor was an animal. It would, it would produce well over a thousand horsepower, well over probably 1100 horsepower. And, and they were just trying to get it to get through the corner. So they'd, they'd pile on as much wing. They weren't worried about drag. They were just worried about trying to get around the corners. And then I look inside and so many of these cars, they have a, a lever in the middle. And I assume that that's a weight jacker just to, to help them pump the weight jacker up to, to help it give, um, you know, during the race to be able to adjust the car. It's, um, you know, today I think that that's really cool. We, we do it electronically and hydraulically, but, you know, they were doing it back then. But, you know, you think of all the drag on the car that they had to make that kind of horsepower just to go 180, 190 miles an hour. And um, today if we put one of those in, in that Delara, We'd, be, we'd go 250 miles an hour probably because it's just it, there's there's it's just raw power and and the motor's bigger and it's turbocharged and you know even the turbos on them look at how big it is it's it's huge so yeah I think that back then it was all about I know at one point they even talked about trying to keep the rear tires from spinning you know so yeah now the rules say the rear wing can't be that big and in Indianapolis, you don't really want it that big, even with the other cars, because we make so much downforce underneath now. I can tell you that 67 winning cars here in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum, and if you want to come and see history of motorsports, this is where it is. And I can't tell you, but it, this, is, this is exciting for me, and I love it. You know, this, this is where it all began, and this is what we're all aspiring to get to.